Good morning. It's good to have you guys here at church in the building again. And it's good to have all you kids in the service today. We're going to open up in prayer, and uh, we're going to get started with worship this morning. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for today. Thank you that we can back in the church building, Lord, to have church together and to worship together. Lord, I pray that you would just anoint this service, anoint Pastor Wes as he delivers the kids' message this morning, and just speak to our hearts, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, wonderful. So we're going to do something a little bit different for worship today. Uh, it's going to be, uh, the kids are going to be familiar with it, but the parents, maybe not so much. But uh, I'm going to have my family come up. They, they've been practicing tirelessly to uh, get all the actions and the moves down. We're going to make you move. We're going to make you uh, uh, get worked out this morning. So as we pull the videos out, the words are going to be up on the screen, but they're also going to be doing some actions. So I invite you to join them. So let's stand up and let's worship together today.
which is kind of frustrating to my wife because the house is like a fridge in 65 degrees all the time, but um, there's a little battle over the thermostat sometimes. But, but uh, I like shorts. What do you like to wear? What do you come What's your favorite thing to wear? Flip flops. Flip flops. Okay. I get on my sandals. Is that wrong? I have sandals on. Yeah. Oh yes, flip flops. I know. I know. He gets sandals. Any type of sandal. Any. If there's a hole in it, he doesn't understand why it's a shoe. So. No, but I love flip flops or sandals or anything. I can't wait to crack them open. Usually, as soon as the snow melts, they're on my feet. I don't want to show off my pretty toes because people might be jealous of my pretty toes. So, um, so I like shorts. Uh, she likes to wear flip flops. Uh, let's see. We'll call them one or two people. What is your favorite thing to wear? Raise your hand if you want to answer. Okay, Amari. Tank tops. Tank tops. Okay. Uh, Addie, what's your favorite thing to wear? Shorts. Shorts. Yes, shorts. Right on. Uh, um, Jordan. Shoes. Shoes are always good. Uh, Faith? Oh, Crocs. Yes, Crocs. And Ian? Shorts. Yes, we love shorts. I love shorts. So, uh, so I want to thank you for sharing your favorite things to wear. Uh, today we're going to learn about what it means to us to fight evil with truth. Everyone say it to me. Fight evil with truth. Say it with me. Fight evil with truth. Very good. Um, now today we're going to hear about some of uh, God's friends who beat his enemies with truth by telling the truth. Telling the truth is very important, isn't it? Uh, so let's find out how they did it. But let's pray before we get started, okay? Father, we're so thankful that you are truth. You are the definition and the very meaning of truth, Lord. And uh, if you say it, it is truth, Lord. And we're so thankful that we can rejoice in that. And that we know your truth through Jesus Christ, your Son. So I ask that you just open up our ears to hear your truth today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So, um, thank you very much. I'll call, back. I'll call you back in just a minute. Um, everyone has this little optical illusion sheet. Optical illusion. How many like optical illusions? Yeah? The first one almost made me sick. Oh, look at it real quick and it's like, whoa. I feel like I'm on a roller coaster. Uh, so since we're learning about how we fight evil with truth, uh, one way we can, we can do that is by telling the truth, right? We can tell the truth about God when we hear lies about God. Sometimes we hear lies about God from other people, from maybe the on TV we'll hear them say something that we know is wrong, but they're trying to tell us lies about God. Uh, so let's practice looking for the truth in some of these tricky pictures. Now, I want you to look at the first picture there. And I want you to look at it just for a second there. And what I want to ask you is, decide if the lines are crooked or straight. Do you think those lines on the page are crooked or straight? That, you know, I, I didn't believe it when it told me this. But, uh, Addie, what do you think? They're crooked or straight? Crooked. You think they're crooked? They look crooked, don't they? they, they you think they're straight? Okay, so we got we got straight and crooked. Well, the black and white boxes in the picture, they don't line up. And that tells our eyes a lot. They, our eyes are lying to us. Because actually, they are straight. They are straight. The picture sort of lies to our eyes. Sometimes we hear lies with our ears and lies about God that aren't real. But we fight those lies with the truth that God is real. The truth that we know and that we read in His Word. Because we know if God says it, it's true. Uh, so look at the second picture there, um, and I want you to put it down on your, on your table, and I want you to look at it. Now you tell me, do you think that there is a little bouncy ball underneath that picture? Yeah. It kind of looks like it, though. If you look at it, it looks like it's kind of coming up a little bit, and there might be a little ball yeah. under there. Like, maybe it's a trick. Maybe, maybe Pastor West put a ball underneath there. No, no. This picture can confuse our eyes by thinking that there's a ball under the paper, but the truth is, the paper's just flat. I mean, we can... You can see that. It's just flat. There's no ball under there. Sometimes we might wonder, uh, or uh, sometimes we might be confused about God's love. But the truth is that God always loves each and every one of us, no matter what we do. God loves each and every one of us. And the last one is my favorite. I like this one. Uh, I want you to look at that. Uh, those two lines with circles and tell me, and I want you to think, which line is longer? Is it the top one or the bottom one? Which line is longer? Um... Ian, which line is longer? You think they're the same? Anyone else, anyone else think that one is longer? Toria? They're equal. Yeah, they're equal, okay. Um, Titus, 
Which one's longer? Are they the same? Yeah, you think they're the same? Okay, well, you're right. The first line is exactly the same length, but the circles make our eyes look at it differently. I had to look at that one for a while. I almost got on my tape measure to check it, just to make sure, because I want to be, I want to be telling you the truth, okay? Uh, but they are the same. Some might wonder if God is far away from us, but the truth is, God is close to us all the time. So, uh, lies about God can be tricky, but we won't get tricked when we remember the truth about God. And we fight evil with truth. Say that with me. We fight evil with truth. truth. That is that God is real. God loves us, and God is always with us. So, uh, at this time, I'm going to have about my family up one more time. We're going to do a little, uh, a little uh, illustration here. And uh, while we talk about this, invite them all to come up. They got their little cat toy there. We'll be playing with yarn. And if you have your Bibles, you can turn it to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, okay? Uh, sometimes God's evil enemy tries to get us to believe things that aren't true about God. How many of us have heard people say things that we know aren't true about God? Maybe it's on the playground. Or maybe it's at school. I mean, sometimes in school and some of the science books and stuff like that, they say things that we know aren't true. And so we need to remember that we know the truth and, and tell people about that truth, too. We can fight that evil with truth. So as I read some of these lies that we may have heard on the playground or in our, on our school books or, or from our teachers or from other people, uh, these guys are going to start passing around this piece of yarn, okay? And watch them and see what they're going to make. Uh, so, some people may say that God isn't real, but we know that's not true. Some people say that God doesn't love us, but we know that that's not true. Some people say that God didn't create us, but we know that that's not true, right? Some people say that God can't help us. Like, he can't help us if we're hurting or if we're in need. But we know that that's not true. Some people say that God isn't kind, that he's mean, and he wants to take vengeance on us for being so wicked. But we know that that's not true. Some people may say that God isn't with us all the time, that he can't be with us all the time. But we know that's not true. Wow. Look what's going to happen here. What's going to happen here? They're, they look like they're stuck. Like they've kind of woven a web of lies around them that are surrounding them. They're pretty stuck, aren't they? And when they believe things that aren't true about God, our hearts can feel stuck too. But the Bible tells us that God's truth sets us free. So in John chapter 8 and in verse 32, Jesus is talking to some people in Jerusalem. And this is what he says. John 8.32. So he says, if you know the truth, and you know me, you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. So these guys are pretty, pretty tied up, aren't they? They're talk, stuck in this web of lies and deceit. But, but, we fight evil with truth. Remember that? We fight evil with truth. By remembering things we know that are true from the Bible. Now let's think of some things that we know that are true about God right now. Uh, what about God loves us? That's truth, right? God made us. Uh, God made the whole world around us. God is strong. God is kind. And God is always with us. What happened? Well, look at that. They are free, aren't they? Look at that. They're free from the lies. They're free from being trapped in that web of lies. Now that we're free, we feel uh, stuck by believing something about God that that's true, but the truth can set us free. It can set others free too. Did you know that? That you can help others be set free too. We can share the truth with others just like Jesus' friends did. Uh, I know 
I like to share the truth with other people when I'm at work. Like, um, when I'm maybe pumping someone's gas and they're having a bad day, I will pray for them and let them know that God loves them. God can give them strength. And I did, yes. And God gives them strength and gives them healing and power. And God is always with us and He never forgets us. Those are some truths that I can share with other people while I'm at work. Now, where can you share the truth about God with others? Anyone? Where can you? Amari. At school. At school, yes, with your classmates. Anyone else? Where can you share the truth of God with others? Addie. At store. Yes, at the store. That's right. Molly, where can you share truth? Everywhere. That is a great answer. I love that answer. Titus, where can you share truth about God? And yes, you can at home. That's right. And Ian, last one. Where can you share truth about God? At church. That's right. That's right. Those are such good answers. Thank you so much for helping me out and giving us all ideas to where we can share truth about God. God's truth is so strong. So strong. It protects us. Like the armor on this night, God's truth protects us from the enemy. It can set us free from things that people may say that aren't true about God. Now, now as we uh, close here today, we learn to fight evil with truth. We heard how God's friends told the truth about God and beat his evil enemy. Now, let's talk to God right now about things we know are true about God and us. So, if you want to bow your heads and close your eyes, let's pray today. Dear God, we're so thank you, thankful that you help us to fight evil with truth. Uh, we know that you are true. We know that you love us, that you uh, forgive us. And uh, Father, we're just so thankful that you are here with us and everywhere we go. We're so thankful that you made us, and that's truth. We're so thankful that you love us because that's truth, that you are strong, and you are forgiving. So God, be with each and every one of us here and wherever we may be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So as I invite Pastor Terry to come up, you have a couple of worksheets on your table there. You can do some coloring on them. Uh, or there's a Bible verse on there for you to remember. Uh, but I just want to thank you guys for coming out. And if you plan to come next week, just make sure you go to the website and sign up so we know how many tables to set up. Pastor Terry, thank you. Great job, Pastor Wes. So much truth about how the evil ties us up. But you know what? God's truth does set us free. And I'm going to talk about that some more too. As we talk about the belt of truth. And I want to speak a little bit more about how that, that can, how that the belt of truth can help us more too. And when I speak about the belt of truth, we might ask us how the belt of truth affects us in our world today. And how that uh, we can address that very thing. So as we walk through this, I want to ask you, you know, how many of you, the world, how do you, how do you see that sometimes the world is changing your mind about things? How it, it tries to tell you one thing when you know something different about the Bible. When you know that the Bible says one thing, but you're hearing other people say, you know, that's not true. And, you know, we find that the world is always trying to change our mind about that thing. And we like to call it like black and white. And when we look at black and white, that's what the Bible tells us. It tells us that some things are black and some things are white. And it's trying to change our minds and say things that are, are gray. And, you know, the enemy's been doing that since the very beginning. Because he said in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, he said that, you know, Satan said this to Eve. He said, did God really say this? And when we say, did God really say something like that? He's challenging what God said in his word against truth. And what we want to do is we want to talk about that and see how that when he challenges us to see this and whether the moral standards are changing, we have to go back to God's word and we have to say, okay, is God's word really true? And we see that it is. And I want to say in all seriousness, you know, how many of you like to play games like Xbox and PlayStation and all that? Okay. And what, you know, Pastor Wes and Stacy was talking to us about this is so important, too, because, you know, what we're talking about is very serious. It's not a game. It's not a vape. It's not a Wii. It's not a PlayStation. It's not an Xbox. 
It's not anything like this. This is something very serious. When we look at games, we see that those things, I mean, they're fun to play, but they're not serious like real life is. And so when we look at this truth, talking about the adult's truth, talking about God's truth, you know, it's not a game. This is a real, real life thing. So we can't just shut the machine off. We can't hit the reset button. And we can't just make it all start all over again because I lost all of my lives. We have one life to live right now. And that's real. So we can't operate out of fear. We need to operate out of God's truth. We need to operate out of God's promises. So when we think about what the armor of God is, what the belt of truth is, Scripture says this. And I want to read this verse. And this is what we've been talking about. Out of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. And next week, I'm going to have some things. We saw how we had the armor of God here. We're going to add one more piece to that each week, and you're going to see some things. But when we talk about putting on that full armor of God, it says, so that when the day of evil comes, in other words, when we're getting tested, you may be able to stand the ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around the waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, he says, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Another verse, a verse that is very key in this is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. It talks about how that we do not fight battles like they do in the world today. When we talk about fighting with tanks and, and machine guns and, and cannons and nuclear weapons, this verse says the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds, to demolish arguments and every pretension that set itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So all those things, those arguments, those things, those ideas, like we saw uh, Wes and Stacy up here, when Stacy had all the kids tied up at web, those are lies, those are pretensions, those are things that aren't true. So when we look at those things, see God's word destroys those things, it cuts those lies, those web of lies. So when we look at the belt of truth, what is the belt of truth? And you saw on that little, on that piece that he, Ian, our Prince Ian had on, or Knight Ian, he had this on, he had that belt of truth. You know, this is a real one, and I'm going to show you one next week. But this belt of truth was made out of leather. And this belt of truth that we're talking about here, you know, it was leather. It was tied around a wool tunic. And it connected bronze plates that hung down in front and protected the groin area, this whole area right here. And the belt and the girdle itself was what you call singulum. Can you say that? Singulum. Singulum, which supported the sword and the dagger and the bronze apron. This singulum was worn all the time, even without the armor pieces. And rather than being a mere belt, when it was the sole garment, it was a short wrapped skirt. And often that garment, like the tunic, would be worn ungirded at home. It would just hang. And therefore, you know, kind of act as a fastening the belt and even at times tucking the garment in. So when they tuck that garment in, it also showed that they were preparing for some kind of activity or some journey. And swords were carried inside the belt or in the sheath suspended from the belt on the side. And it's usually opposite of the hand that you use. So if I'm right-handed, then it would be starting here on the left. So according to the Dictionary of Bible things, it also talked about rough living. That's what it referred to when they saw, when they saw that. And in this passage, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, it speaks of it. It says, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. What does that all mean? And I want to put it all together for us. So everything that we talked about in verses 10 through 13, it says this. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. So when those lies come, we can stand up against it with truth. We can tr 
but you stand up against it with God's word, truth. Okay, so that you can stand against it with the uh, stand against the devil's scheme because our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against you and me. It's not against people that are out there. It's against those things that are, are rulers, those things that are authorities, those things that are powers in the dark world, in the world that we don't see. It's a spiritual realm. And against the spiritual forces of evil and what they call the heavenly realms. So all of these promises, all this truth that he's talking about here, this is what he's referring to. So because of all this truth that he's talking about, we put on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, and we're in it, we see it all the time. When that day comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, based on all of that, stand firm. And what that means is it means don't sit. It says don't recline. So we can't go home and get in our lazy water recliner and do that. Okay? We can't. Don't fall. It means don't stop or don't move, I mean. But what we are to do is to stop. We are to stop and we are to stand firm. In other words, I'm going to stand firm and move, be immovable. What, whatever comes against me, and what are we talking about? Not just standing here immovable and firm like this, but to stand firm and immovable in the word, the truth. So, I like the examples that Stacy and them were giving us. Those examples talking about, you know, when somebody comes to you and says, God doesn't love you because of this or that, then you say, no, that's not true. God's word says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, and whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. See, when, when the enemy tells us that, when he tells us something we know is not true, then we can respond back, and we can say, you know, that's not true. God's word says. God's word says. And that's what Jesus did. So we stand firm in that truth. Now, I'm going to get a little bit deep here for some of you young guys. But, you know, the original language talks about this. And it's very important because when it talks about it in the original language, it says, stand then, having encircled the hip of you in truth. That sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? But that's the way Greek puts it. And in that original language, they always put what's important at first, and then it goes through. So he's saying, stand. That's the most important truth. In this passage, stand, like what we've been talking about. Be a move. Stand in the truth. And when he, he goes on, he says, stand and having a circle. And I like that. You know, even when we look at the web, it encircled them. But we can be a circle of lies, too. But those lies can be broken. They can be cut like they did with the scissors. They cut those lies. And we can cut those lies with truth. And that's God's word. We can say, this is what God's word says. So that's important. But it also talks about, I don't want to get too bad, too deep here, but it refers to your responsibility and my responsibility. So when your mom and dad tells you to do something and says, you know what, I want you to go clean your room, and you don't do it, and we listen to the enemy, and the enemy says, you don't need to go clean your room. That's not true. We need to obey our parents and do that. So that requires you and me to do what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be doing the truth. And it's the same with God's word. That responsibility is on you and me. Nobody else can make you do it. Nobody else can have you do it. You have to do it. We have to make that responsibility. We have to make that responsibility as we follow God's truth. So literally, we need to cause ourselves to do it. We need to cause ourselves, according to this verse, to be in a state of readiness, to be prepared for battle with the truth. That we're going to put it on that belt that hems in everything about us so that we're prepared for whatever comes at us, whatever battle comes at us. Now, what truth? Now, this is more for you older, pe older people. Is this, what truth do we follow? What truth do we follow? It's not CNN. That's not where we get truth. We need to know that we surely are really getting truth. It's not CNN. It's not Fox. It's not ABC. It's not NBC or CBS. God forbid there's always a question of where we're getting truth. And it's not that everything and anything that they say is wrong, but we need a solid source. We need a solid source, and that solid source is the Word of God. That solid source is what God's Word says. So when we hear from everything out there, we need to compare anything out there. We need to compare it to the Word of God. We need to measure it to the Word of God. So when we're told things, we know right away sometimes that it's true or we know it's not true. 
Based on what? Maybe it's because of the judgment discernment God is giving us. Maybe it's because we're an eyewitness and we saw something take place. And we know for a fact this is what happened. But maybe also it comes secondhand. Maybe we heard it from somebody else. Maybe somebody that we really trust. That's a good second source. But maybe it could be, God forbid, Facebook or Instagram, or it could be Twitter, it could be any of those other platforms. And we have to ask ourselves, what are we basing our decisions on? What are we basing our decisions on? And I want to ask you, what about you? What are you basing your decisions on? Are you in the figurative sense, imaginary, are you putting on the armor of God? Are you putting on that belt of truth each day? In the real sense, what that means is, are we in our word? Are we in the word of God every day? Enough that we're knowledgeable, that we're walking in wisdom, that we know the battle that is to come. We've got the truth, so we know that we can stand against it. You know, we can get confidence from God's word, and that's where we get that. We get it from God's word. And when we are in the word and we're giving something for God's spirit to speak to us about, when we, when we know the word is hidden in our hearts and hidden in our minds, then God's spirit has something to work with for the battles that are to come. And specifically, talking about the bell of truth, are you prepared with the truth to do battle with the lies that are concerning and coming against you? Whether it's your lifestyle, whether it's your faith, whether it's your salvation, whether it's your eternity. Are you prepared with the knowledge of the word of God to defend against the attacks of the enemy when they come? And when they come, if they've not already come. You see, when we stand, when we make a decision to do what God's word says, when we make a decision to stand in the truth, the enemy is going to come against us. Because he doesn't want you and I living for God. He doesn't want us standing for truth. He doesn't want us being a witness. He doesn't want us to defend the defenseless. So we're fighting a battle that is spiritual, but often reveals itself in the physical one. And how does that happen? Sometimes we get attitudes spoken back to us. All kinds of things can come against us. So in conclusion, I'm going to pray in a moment, but I want to paint a picture for us. I see a vision of the body of Christ. And the body of Christ standing in the midst of battle against the spiritual forces of evil. The demons and the rulers and the authorities, the powers of this dark world, the spiritual forces of evil clothed in their battle gear. And they are winning. The body of Christ is winning. They're winning because their hands are trained for war, their fingers are trained for battle, as it says in Psalm 144, verse 1. So much that the finger of light is pressing out all the darkness, so the light is pressing out the darkness from people's lives because of the great amount of wisdom that they have, because they're walking in the Word of God. That the Word of God is sweeping, not only over Valley City, over Barnes County, and over the entire state of North Dakota, but across the entire of the United States across the oceans and the seas until it encompasses the entirety of the world. I see a people that are literally searching, a people that are literally searching for people because they're ready to fall over the cliff and they're snatching them from falling over the cliff into the abyss, headed towards hell, but they're saving them because of the power of the word of God in their lives. Literally being the vessels that God is using to save millions of people. I see the enemy outraged. I see Satan outraged as he stands by helpless against the power of the word of God. Wanting so badly to damn people to hell that he can't. His hands are tied against the power of God. The literal gates of hell cannot stand against the power of God. And that literally happened in Acts chapter 5, verses 17 through 42. We see that very thing take place. So I ask you, do you see yourself as part of the army, do you see yourself standing against the gates of hell in the name of Jesus? Because it all starts in one moment, every day, in the Word of God. Having a devotional life in the Word of God, thinking and meditating on the Word of God, having a desire to be in the Word of God, studying and asking questions. It all starts right here and right now. So I ask you to make that decision. I want us to pray as we close. Will you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for the message that we have heard today, Lord, concerning the belt, how that lies can weave us and tie us up and keep us from God's word and God's truth. And God, we ask that by your word today, by your truth, that you would break those things that have bound us, that you would cut the, 
those ties that have kept us all bound up and tied up that we can't hear, that we can't know, that we can't live in the truth. But God, we know that when we hear the truth of the Word of God, that it breaks those things, it breaks those lies. And we ask today that you would break the lies that have chained us up, tied us up, that we can be free to serve you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's so good to have you guys back with us in church. And we pray that as you go through this week, that God blesses your week. Have a great week. God bless. One quick thing I wanted to say, you can take the crayons with you, your papers. If you don't, just leave them on the table and we'll take care of them.